All right, good morning, everybody. Um, thank you very much for staying and listening to my talk. I will try and be as efficient as possible, be respectful of uh, everybody's time. Um, I want to talk a little bit today about uh, what we believe is an overlooked and underappreciated opportunity in the, uh, the market of medical devices. So in uh, 1969, we put Neil Armstrong on the moon. And unfortunately, in uh, 2012, uh, we lost Neil Armstrong due to a complication associated with his coronary artery bypass uh, grafting surgery um, where the blood could not be adequately drained from around his heart. Um, one of the key uh, flaws in this is the fact that the technology that was being used to drain his blood uh, predated his trip to the moon. So functionally, what are the problems that have occurred with, uh, with drainage following uh, these major procedures like open heart and open lung surgery. Um, functionally, the current standard of care just does not work. 36% um, of patients uh, have an issue where their chest tube or their drain clogs. Um, this is uh, one of the, the myriad of complications that led to us losing uh, an American hero. Um, in addition to that, that lack of drainage uh, drives some pretty significant complications. One in five patients is going to have a major complication uh, as a result of not being able to drain their blood uh, postoperatively. Uh, similarly, the uh, way in which uh, data is recorded is still very, very uh, antiquated. Um, you can look at this little video in the lower right-hand corner. Uh, that is really the, the key way to measure the amount of air that is being pulled from a patient following lung surgery. Um, so you can only imagine if you're a clinician trying to make a uh, objective uh, decision guessing how many of those bubbles is coming up is, is really not a very reliable way to do that. And now these have some pretty significant compact, uh, uh, impact not only on the patient but as on the hospital as well. The average U.S. cardiothoracic surgical center is going to experience uh, three million dollars in unnecessary costs as a result of these complications uh, that really should be solvable. Um, and this is particularly of interest because uh, cardiac and thoracic surgery are lump sum reimbursements. So uh, every dollar that gets spent on this patient's course of care comes out of the bottom line of the hospital. Now, in addition, these procedures are huge revenue driver drivers for uh, hospitals. So from a health economic standpoint, uh, not only are these preventable complications eating at the bottom line, but they're also limiting the hospital's ability to do more procedures uh, and garner more revenue. So we've solved these problems by applying modern technology to surgical drainage. So we have a 510K clear device. We hold multiple patents on our technology. And what we've done is build the first and only automated post-operative surgical drainage system. It is a drop-in replacement for the current standard of care that solves the problems that currently exist. We use digital intelligence for superior drainage, and we use intelligent sensors and software to monitor the output and provide critical clinical decision-making information to the physicians. So how does this work? We take a system uh, that you can see here in the left-hand corner of manually yanking and manipulating on these tubes to try and to get them to drain and fully automate it through controlled pneumatics. We take the bubbles and turn it into objective data that is clearly displayed on our screen so when a rounding physician or critical care doctor comes in the room, they can see exactly how much fluid has come out of that patient over the past 6, 12, 24 hours and use that to direct their course of care. So the data that has been published around this has been tremendous. It showed reduction in complications, shorter lengths of stay, reduction in total costs. There's a lot of additional benefit that goes with it, including uh, smaller and softer drains, uh, earlier ambulation to get these patients up and moving around, and then also uh, protecting them with safety and electronic alarms that notify the physicians should something go awry. So the opportunity in the market for surgical drainage is huge. Uh, there's over a million cardiac and thoracic surgical procedures performed a year uh, in the US alone. Uh, and in Europe, uh, it's essentially the same size. 
and uh, the idea of drains is not limited to open heart or open lung surgery, but it's used uh, in trauma surgery and in abdominal surgery, uh, orthopedic surgery, and so they're used fairly ubiquitously throughout the hospital environment. Um, so it's a multi-billion opportunity. And as I mentioned, our technology, Thorgard, is a drop-in replacement for the current standard of care. So the market's currently dominated by the large medical device companies that aren't paying much attention that are using century-old technology. Uh, over the past five or so years, uh, tens of millions of dollars have been invested in this space with a few new entrants uh, coming in and immediately making significant impact in patient outcomes. Um, we are uh, in the, the prime position of being a fast follower um, and one of our key differentiators compared to uh, not only the standard of care, but also uh, some of these new entrants is we have developed a solution that addresses the needs of the entire spectrum of surgeons, not just cardiac surgeons, not just thoracic surgeons, but one single solution that goes through that entire uh, course of care. So we are just now wrapping up our clinical studies. Um, we had great success, very uh, satisfied users at two premier medical centers here in the United States, Stanford and NYU. Um, currently the data is being uh, uh, compiled and built into a manuscript. We plan to publish that here later this year. Uh, our our uh, management team and our overall team is uh, experienced. We've been through this before, but we're also still ambitious and young and hungry and, and looking forward to making an impact in patients' life. So we have a track record of identi identifying clinical needs, building companies around them, getting FDA clearance, moving the device into a strategic partnership, and eventually getting the ball across the goal line for an exit. Uh, our clinical advisors are top notch. Uh, from some, as I mentioned, some of the uh, world leading centers in cardiac and thoracic surgery with NYU and Stanford and Bryant Heart Center. Um, and they have been tremendously supportive as we have taken this uh, concept from idea all the way through to uh, the stage right now, which is uh, preparing for early commercialization. So, to give a little background about where we are in terms of status and funding. Uh, so we got our kickoff by uh, securing some non-dilutive funding. We received a phase one and phase two grant from the National Science Foundation, uh, as well as some money from the state of Nebraska where we have our engineering and operations. Um, in 2017, we closed a Series A uh, that had allowed us to achieve our 510K clearance, build our pilot production, uh, do the initiation of our clinical sites, and start to build out relationships with some early adopters. So when we raised our, that money, that's what we said we were gonna do with it, that's what we have done with it. Uh, now we are in the course of raising uh, our Series B uh, this year, which will be $10 million. That will go towards early commercialization, where we'll continue to work with these world-class centers, uh, build champions and with the key opinion leaders, and continue to publish additional data on what we're doing. And that's it. I will be in the breakout room later, so please, if you have any questions or any interest, feel free to stop by. Thank you.